it should be noted that I got here as close as possible. Hey, Stacy. Now, I've got this wonderful back screen that's not, as soon as I bring somebody into the box, I'm going to lose it. But I want to show you I know how to do it. <laughs> I think I can even move myself around. Look at me. Look at me. Hi, Karen and Bonnie. Hello, everyone. Come on in. Join us for a live. Hi, Hermetti. How's everyone doing? Happy Wednesday. Got lots to talk about today. But as always, I like to see where the conversation is going to take us. Is it going to be a day for spiritual care? Is it going to be a day to talk about Christian nationalism? Are we going to deconstruct some of our indoctrinated beliefs? Are we going to talk about uh, how religious patriarchy messed us up six ways to Sunday? As my grandma used to say, what are we going to talk about today? How is everyone? Thank you all for joining. Appreciate it. Oh, I usually go see how the live is on my backup account. So let me go do that. Can you dig it? Hi. And there I am. Everybody hear me okay? Quality good? Hope so. Hello, hello. Happy Wednesday, everyone. I kind of went down a rabbit hole on a couple of things because of our conversation the other day about a welcoming versus an affirming church. So I want to, if that's something you want to talk about or you have questions, let's see where it takes us. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Terrence. Are people staying and then leaving? Are you staying? You're going to talk to me. I'm just going to talk to myself in the mods. Is that what I'm doing? <laughs> You never can tell. You never can tell, right? Thank you as the campfire turns. I appreciate you uh, sharing the live. It does help in this universe. Um, appreciate that. Fester says, thanks for sharing your experience. Well, I'm glad you like that. Thank you, Melissa. Appreciate those kind words. Uh, maybe Meg, would I still consider myself a Christian? I did post a video about that a couple of days ago, but it is a good question. I consider myself a an unchurched, non-conforming Christian who's an ordained interfaith, inner spiritual minister um, who walks the spiritual but not religious path. So um, that's a lot of words. I always say it doesn't fit on a business card. I'm not sure that your your spirituality should fit on a business card. I mean, some people say, you know, you can call yourself spiritually independent, but I kind of like to describe a little bit about who I am. Um, but the non-conforming part really defines me because um, I hold on to my Christian identity because of its impact on my spirituality. And so my religious heritage, there's elements of it that I value, especially as it's connected to my, um, my familial experience, my grandmother. Um, the things she taught me about um, Christianity and you know I dedicate my book to her and because even though she was a staunch Southern Baptist you even towards the end of her life you started to see those um, edges softening the edges were softening so um, that's how what I consider myself maybe Meg does that explain Hi, Violet. Thanks for being here. Appreciate you. Glad you're here. Hi, Bridget. Thanks for being here. Maybe, Meg, any other, any other questions about anything I said there about my spirituality? Let me know. Glad you're here. Thank you, Meg. I'm glad that, I'm glad that helped. 
as you can see, Deconstructing Christians is who I want to talk to. Um, I'm not looking to try to have too many con contentious conversations. I try to make this to be a safe space for people who are deconstructing. Can you send the invite? Yes, I can send the invite, but as soon as I do, I lose my nifty little background. And then y'all got to see me so close up. So <laughs> I don't want to yet, but because I don't know how to do it otherwise. All right, we're going to do this panel. And then all of a sudden, I really apologize in advance for all of you about to see my face up close. <laughs> there you go. Oh, and I'm off. Let's see, which way do I need to move this camera that way? Does that help? All right, Rev Carla's shop. Where are you? There you go. You have been invited. If you're coming up, you have to talk. I think I'm here. You're here. Hi. Hi. How are you? Now, see oh, if wow. I go if I go back it's just crazy cuz I know people are still putting their green screen on, but I don't have the option. It, it's like there's all the settings go away, so I don't have the option to do anything other than be here. I'm sure we can get it figured out. Let me see. Mobile preview, share your live, mark up. I got to spend some time on the tube of the U <laughs> and figure this out. Lori has a question. What does it mean if I believe in Jesus but don't subscribe to regular Christian views? Uh, Lori, would you like to come up and talk to me? I have a couple of, I'd like some clarifying questions if you're willing to talk to me. Sure, all right, let's see what you got here. You should not have any problems. I've just, uh, it says you're not available. I, I'm not sure why, Lori, I think you can't be on camera, but you should be able to join the live. I, I'm, I just don't understand enough. I'm sorry, but it's telling me that I, you are not available. Can you request? Why don't you try to request, Lori, and see if you can come up? Thank you, Stacy. Uh, so excited about your upcoming book. Thank you, Dr. Elizabeth. I appreciate that. And don't forget, it is in pre-order. Um, it it will be out in October, so that's really only a couple months away. I cannot believe it. So, hi, Ron. Are you okay, honey? You want to take a breath? You want to take a breath and try that again, or just go ahead and leave because this is a safe space for deconstructing Christians, and what you're showing now um, is just your beliefs. Actually, Lori, it did work. I think it did. Are you there? Hi. I'm here. Can you Good. hear me? Yes, I can. Hi, hi, La okay. hi Larry, hi. I think is it. Okay, so you're here. Thank you so much. So you asked a question about what it means if I believe in Jesus, but don't dis subscribe to regular Christian views. So uh, do you consider yourself a deconstructing um, Christian? Um, I'm not really sure. I have a complicated uh, relationship, I guess. I'm not really sure what um, I consider myself any anymore. <laughs> um, I just, I know that I believe in Jesus and I always have. And, but I've never really felt connected with church or like a lot of the ideas that are pushed when being present there, I guess. What? So I, I've always felt, oh, sorry. No, that's okay. Um, what? I've always felt. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, I've always felt close to like, I've always felt spiritual and like close to God, but not really religious per se. Okay. What's your church experience? What denomination are you from? Um, I've gone to a few different churches. I haven't really gone to a whole lot of them. So like I went to 
just like a non-denominational Christian church with my grandma when I was younger. Um, I've gone in and out of a few different ones. And then the last one I was at was like kind of weird because it was a Baptist church, but I grew up in the town and it was like a very small church and they did a lot of work with the homeless community. And so that's kind of how I ended up there. Okay. Okay. So it sounds like you more than likely had like an evangelical experience. Um, yeah. Based on saying that it was non-denominational because non-denominational churches really started taking off um, when people were trying to distance themselves from some of the, um, what they saw as some of the problematic uh, reputation of some of that rigid dogma. So they didn't want to be associated with some of what their denomination said. Uh, hold on just a second, right. Everett, I'm texting you. Um, so when you say that you are, you're, you still believe in Jesus, is it that you are, you, you want to have a relationship with Jesus or I, I feel like it's kind of hard to explain. It's just like, I believe that, you know, he was here and that he was a person and that he did like, I don't have the same view of Jesus as a lot of people that would claim to be Christians do. Like, I think he was like the coolest person that did amazing things for people. And I don't think that he would have subscribed to a lot of what goes on in his name now, if that makes sense. Okay. All right. So, yeah, when you, so your question, and that's the reason why I wanted to get some clarity. I'm going back to your question. It's, it's getting buried in some of the comments. So hang on just a second. Let me find it again. Uh, I just want to tell you, I love your content. Thank you, Jersey girl. Uh, we've already had some Bible thumpers in here, but we have awesome mods. Um, <laughs> I lost your question. It's kind of. Uh, I think it was just. I think it was I, just I kind of it. along the lines you of. You want like, to believe in Jesus, okay. but don't ascribe to subscribe to the regular Christian views. So there's a deconstructing is looking at some of your indoctrinated beliefs and how they serve your spiritual journey. Because when a person starts to deconstruct, they realize or they begin to try to understand how their personal spiritual experience and their lived experience and how they're they're in relationship with people in their lives sometimes the very people that their church is teaching them to judge or condemn right. doesn't reconcile with your who you are and so that oftentimes is where the deconstructing starts. And what I, what I will tell people is what the most important thing about deconstructing isn't what you believe at the end of it. That's why I don't spend a lot of time when, when we talk about uh, deconstructing, I don't spend a lot of time trying to convince you on what you should believe or right. what church you should or shouldn't go to or what your title will be, how you will identify yourself once you have gone through some of your deconstructing. It's more important about who you are, but we still are holding on to these, this, these indoctrinated beliefs, this, this legalese, if you will, around our spirituality that says, well, can I do this and not be this? Those are, indoctr those are indoctrinated beliefs that says that someone or somehow some, th some organization out there needs to approve of who I am, needs to tell me, right. needs, to, it needs to do that. So that to me is an indication that you, you can let go of some of that needing, needing to think that you have to seek approval to be inspired by or connected to uh, anything about the Jesus story. You don't. There are many people right. who don't ever go to church who find uh, 
that are in, that are inspired by or connected to Jesus in some way, but absolutely reject anything to do with what would be modern, specifically for our experience here, the modern American evangelical Christianity experience. Um, absolutely. So that they makes just, a lot of sense. Yeah. So I, in my in my book, I I talk about. Well, I think one of the hardest things when you're deconstructing is what are you going to do about Jesus? Right. And because for many of us, we were taught this literal uh, that this what's inside the Bible is 100 uh, percent. That translation is 100 percent accurate. Our translation and our indoctrination, the way we were taught, that's the only way to understand the Bible. So only those translate only those translations matter that our Bible that our that our denomination approved and those interpretations of that scripture is the only way to understand those translations. Does that make sense to you? And it, so when you it does, yeah. And so, it's, it's been fairly easy for me to not like I think where the indoctrination comes from is not so much like I've always kind of known that there's been a big difference because I wasn't like I was raised by, you know, lesbian parents. Um, I have biracial siblings. So like I've always been, you know, not exactly what you think of when you think of that kind of thing. But I think where it comes from a lot is like people are always like it's more the other side it's almost more like the spiritual side and not even the church side that's like well how can you still believe in like god and say that like you know you believe in jesus christ but you like are like a human rights activist and you do all these things and you're like so against all these things like being pushed on people do you know what I mean? Like, as far as like, oh, you can't be this, you can't do that, like, and just like taking away anybody's just freedom in any way. So it's hard in that aspect because it's like, well, I can still believe in the Lord, but be a human rights activist, but people don't really view it that way. So you said, and so, okay, you were, you were raised by, um, uh, your parents and you call you said they were lesbian parents, correct? Yes. Yeah, what was your yeah. relationship? How was your but you I believe you said it was your grandmother's church? Mm -hmm, yeah, how was it's, your how was your relationship with your grandmother to your parents? Uh, on both sides of my family like all the relationships are complicated all both of my parents Okay, so both of my moms and then my biological dad were all raised with religion. My biological dad was heavy into the Catholic Church because that's what he was raised in. And then my mom's family um, is just always been super like heavy Christians. Um, and they, it's always been a lot of conflict on my family as far as religion goes, especially like when my mom entered the relationship with her partner. Um, they've been together for 20 plus years. Um, so there's always been conflict. And I'm kind of the, I'm a really outspoken person in my family. Like nobody really likes anything that I talk about or, or anything that I do because it's always questioning and just like not what they subscribe to. But I just do it because I feel like it's time. It's been a lot of years of like, of religious abuse for my family members. Okay, so do you remember when you were in when you were going to church or with your grandmother? Did your was your grandmother outspoken about uh, the LGBTQIA plus community about it being a sin, or did your church was that part of your church teaching? For sure, yeah. Pretty much all churches I've ever been to are have always subscribed to that belief, and I never have personally. Okay. And so, yeah. That, okay, that helps a lot. That's a, that, yeah. that, that's a big key of what's happening here. So obviously, oh my goodness. So trying to reconcile the people that you love, the people that, that raised you, and yet hearing on the other side that, and, and I'm going to ask one more clarifying question because I, I heard you say that there was tension with both of their religious heritage, but was your grandmother's relationship good with your parents? 
or is she still living? Is your grandmother no. still living? She is. Yeah, they have worked on it a lot over the years. And I think my mom's gotten to a place where she can just kind of forgive her mother for a lot of things. But no, they've never had a really a good relationship. Okay. And then same with, yeah. Okay, but you love your grandmother. Yeah. I love my grandmother, yeah. And then my other grandmother who's passed, who was very Catholic, I also, like, loved her a lot, too. Mm. But the Catholic Church caused a lot of, like, generational trauma in our family. So it's hard to, yeah. It's okay. hard to find out, like where I fit. Okay. I All right. Um, I'm going to ask you to mute a minute just so, uh, in case there's any background noise where you're, where you are. Oh yeah. I'm sorry about that. Can no, no, just... it's, it's okay because that was, a, that was a big cue and I'm going to try to bring this together, but it, it also, uh, helps me. It, I get ignited when, when I think I found something that might help you a little bit because okay. you were very, very wise. It's like, this is my favorite part when I used to do spiritual counseling, when all I'm going to do at this point is mirror back to you. Oh, I just realized my awesome necklace is out and is not out. Um, I'm, I get to now mirror back to you what you said, because right. so many times we are holding inside us the wisdom, the wisdom that we need for our healing journey. Right. And I don't remember at what point you said to me, that this is religious abuse or, right. or, and you have you're holding some kind or your family is holding some kind of trauma and you are too so, yeah, because sure. even though that wasn't <laughs> directed at you you've been holding this tension for a really long time and trying to reconcile the fact that you love your parents and yet the religion in which you are seeking your spirituality condemn condemn them and through that filter of a child, you saw how the love of your grandmothers, who you also loved and loved you, but they also, they were judging your parents. And as a child, that, and you're trying to figure out all these emotions, you're, you're not emotionally mature enough to try to process this, but it's all tied right. in to your 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 own identity, your own understanding, your own defining yourself and how you fit into all this religious, the, the, your familial structure and, and receiving what you're receiving as religious instruction and how that's feeding into your faith. And then how do you fit into this? And how am I, who am I going to have to be so that the weaponization of uh, religion will never come my way. So yeah. that mm -hmm. is all tied up in a question that says, Hey, is it okay if I still love Jesus, but I don't want to subscribe or ascribe to this Christian view? Right. All the codes are there on why you are asking that question. The, the path to your religious right. freedom is in that question. And all this, all the healing and stuff that you need to unpack as well. So if you and I were now going to enter into a, a spiritual care companionship counseling relationship, the first thing I would ask you to do is uh, sometimes I get these like what I call spiritual downloads with these questions, but none are coming for me right now. So I would ask you to start journaling your story because okay. you're going to find pivotal points where you witnessed things that were a turning point for you. Because I want, you know, the one thing that we, we have as part of, uh, so many of us are impacted by religious patriarchal, familial patriarchy. I mean, it has just messed us up six ways to Sunday. One of my, my, my grandmother's favorites saying, six ways to Sunday, whatever that was. <laughs> but you are holding on to trauma, some kind of traumatic experience. Now, whether that actually led to trauma, that would be between you and a, and a licensed therapist to actually unpack. But, you know, there's a lot of spiritual manipulation. Right. Spiritual manipulation is a form of, of abuse. And even though nobody intended that, nobody would, I'm sure your grandparents were loving people. They would never do that. They were just reflecting to the world their own indoctrination. If they, if they right. now understood that that was actually a form of abuse, I believe that many people would, would let go of those kinds of 
the weaponization of their faith, when they see how much it's harmed other generations, and why people want to blame people want to blame um, the changing world. No, people are starting to be able to recognize that it's their past that's harmed them. We're we're right. awakening and and a, and we're emotionally emotionally and spiritually mature enough to say, it's not my surroundings; it's my past that has effed me up, and I need to now let right. that go so I can really turn back to my world, healed as a better version of myself, to be in community with the people that I love, because I don't want to be a part of a religion that demands that I weaponize my faith and judge them and show up as this morally and spiritually superior being because I don't feel that way. I just want to be in community with them and I want to love them where they are. And that's how I want people to accept me. Right. So inside that tiny little one sentence question is all the answers to all this stuff that you are holding. So when you start to journal, if this feels right for you, to start journaling and thinking about times that you were in church where you learned something that really felt painful, or you witnessed something that was said and you could see the pain in your, in your eyes. We children are very, very intuitive. We know things, even though the, our, the adults in our lives didn't give us the credit that we deserved for to be able to to read the room and see what was happening and we've been holding on to those things and we carry the right. we carry that bucket with us until we come to a place here where we think we have to have permission just to to connect with Jesus outside of the Christian narrative and as much as people want to scream in the comments and as much as people want to tell you that you can't you absolutely can and so right. de depending on where your deconstructing takes you with that relationship with Jesus, whether you deconstruct to a point where you want to look at the historical context and everything that was going on and you're ready to release some of those uh, interpretations around the Jesus story. Because we know, and I'll just give you an example, we know that there was in some of the manuscripts that are from the New Testament, we know text was added. That's indisputable. Text was added as, oh, for sure. as the translations went on. And so is does that feel something right for you in your spiritual journey? Again, deconstructing is not so much about what you believe. It's about who you become. Because... If this big Absolutely. table, this big table of humanity, I can believe one way and you can believe another, and our spirituality is is not incompatible because our, our higher goal is to leave this world a better place than we found it. When our when our eyes are on humanity, and you've indicated that that's where your your spirituality is being fed, you're already feeling that because you yes. saw the pain in your parents. You saw the irreconcilability in your religious upbringing. So, Lori, I would just invite you to take a breath and, and back this up a little bit, because I think there's some <laughs> inner child wounds that are asking to, to, for some light. And then, then you're going yes. to, that question that you asked will look entirely different. If you, if you spend time doing this in your deconstructing journey, because let me just assure you, this is deconstructing. And yes. I would love to see what the next question is when you come back and see us. It'll look different and it will feel okay. different because I have a feeling that you're reclaiming your spirituality in a beautiful, beautiful, healthy, holistic way. And if you need some uh, book re recommendations, if you want to come into my Rev Carla's Inner Circle, which is free, it's in the book of the face, you can find all that information in my, uh, where you see my face in my profile. And that might be some places that can help okay. you. Okay, I definitely will do that. Thank you so much for You're the welcome. chat. This has been very helpful. You're, yes. wel you're welcome. You. I'm going to drop you down and see who the next guest is. Okay, okay have a great day. Thank yep, you, you too.
Well, hello, Stacy. I didn't mean to do that. That's Sorry. okay. I'm just gonna. I'll, I'll leave you up here. You can mute, and we'll see if that helps. David. Hi, Rev. Carl. How are you? I just wanted to throw you some love. I saw oh. a couple of your videos. I I stitched one. Ah, okay. And uh, it was about that one one person that was asking you to basically debate with them, and but showing you a lot of disrespect. Um. So yeah, basically I just wanted to say I really appreciate your content. It has, my deconstruction journey has been, um, obviously it never quite ends, but people like you who, see I am not a Christian anymore, I don't claim that, but people like you who have your perspective, similar perspectives have really shown me that the teachings of Jesus, the teachings can be, um, they resonate with, we, they resonate with me more now than ever before when I was a Christian. Isn't that interesting? That that happens with a yeah. lot of people. When you read when you read the teachings of Jesus outside of your indoctrinated um, your religious heritage, it sounds very different. Yes, it does. I was just actually having a kind of an exchange on a comment, um, and I. Uh, this guy was talking about Jesus and how toxic and how dangerous his teachings were. And I made a comment saying, like, you need to look a little deeper. What you're saying is is uh, misunderstanding. And he's like, well, Jesus never existed. It's like, well, that's not, that's not what your video is about. That You're moving the bar a little bit here. And, uh, yeah, it's, I will have to say um, your point about having conversations with people who aren't ready, who aren't open and available and how kind of pointless that is, I have found that to be so true. So true. It's much easier, much better just to let them go their own way and, and have their journey on their own <laughs> until they're ready. Yeah, for, for sure. I think you saw that. Uh, hold one second, David. Okay. Yeah, I, I saw that, Lynette. I'm, I'm wondering what to do with it myself. Um, uh, hang on a second. Yeah, I might. I might. I, I'm thinking about it. I'm just going to wait and see where this goes. Um, yeah, if you were here on Monday, you might have... Uh, is that when you were here? Were you here Monday? No, I, this is my first live I've, I've seen of yours that I've been able to, like, um, uh, that shows up on my FRP. But, no, the video I was talking about was uh, a response. You're having a conversation in one of your comments. And the lady would, wouldn't call you by your title, and she was oh. wanting to prove all your points. And yeah. there was like three or four follow-up videos to that, and I stitched one of them. I just found the whole exchange to be refreshing. You articulated it so well. Why? It's it's like a bowl of apples and oranges arguing over over one topic, and nobody can get on the same page. And no, you know, and and we know that we're not on the same page, but they think that we should be on their page or whatever. And it's like, it, there's not even the understanding of a different perspective. Yeah, oftentimes I will get into conversations with people who want to argue about the veracity or the truth of the Bible or specific uh, scriptures, especially the, the scriptures that um, are intended to condemn the LGBTQIA plus community. And when you have released those translations and those interpretations and your understanding of, of spirituality, that's not even the same starting point. I say right. it's like I'm going to play the I'm playing chess over here, but someone comes in and says, well, here's the rules for football and you need to apply <laughs> these rules to this game. And it's like we're playing we're playing two yeah. different two different games here. So we're not. Hi, happy Heather. It's good to see you. Uh, so I appreciate your kind words. I'm going to I'm going to uh, let you hop down. I have someone else asking to be up, but cut, stay around. And uh, if you have any questions, you can drop them in the comment and come back up. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your work. And you're Love welcome. It. OK, bye bye. Bye. Hello, Will. Hello. So uh, I've seen some of your uh your videos that you call yourself an unchurched uh, Christian, whatever that means. Um, now, what do you mean by that? I don't go to church. So how do you have a full Christian life without 
basically access to the sacraments? Uh, I don't, I no longer ascribe to the need for the sacraments. Uh, I'm interesting. not, I'm also, so yeah, I'm, it is interesting. I, it, it is interesting. I'm also non-conforming. What is your background? What is your denominational background? Presbyterian. Um, uh, I was an elder. But, in the, you know, I was an elder in the Presbyterian Church. Which one? Uh, PCUSA. Okay. Okay. Well, that's that's unfortunate that uh, you you abandoned. I would say Orthodox sacramentology. I guess. Um, well, uh, you understand. That's a. I, I'm, no, I'm not going to let you. I'm not going to let you do that. Um, that's a pretty strong judgment on my spirituality when you know nothing about me, except what you're seeing in some of my videos. And it's obvious that you're not deconstructing. So I'm not sure that our conversation will be helpful because we are here to talk to deconstructing Christians. So if well, de what does deconstruction mean in what sense? Because I've deconstructed to some degree some of what I was brought up with. I, I don't hold to uh, everything that I was raised to believe. I wasn't raised Calvinist. I became one. Um, so it's not like I have not become convinced by views. Now, if deconstruction inherently means unwedding yourself to a tradition rather than wedding yourself to a new one, I suppose that's the case. Uh, but I, I still have some difficulty understanding how one can be an unchurched Christian when part of the part of being a Christian has historically meant community in the church and membership in uh, the church, be that the invisible church, which I guess you would still claim to be a part of, but Christians are still called to be part of the visible church. Who says I'm not? Part of a visible church? You're talking about the difference between organized religion and at certain aspects of spirituality. When you talk about I, as a 62-year-old woman who navigated almost my entire life as a not only a Christian but one who did the work, who did honor the sacraments, who was in leadership, who did everything that I was supposed to do, who went into different types of traditions to, uh, to, to immerse myself in the entirety of the Christian experience, only to spiral out of it when, and this, this is my experience, but also uh, it's inarguable that the data is very clear, and I don't know if, you, if you've ever spent any time on Pew Research Center, about the number of people who are deconstructing. But it, the, the data is very clear that we're very close to becoming uh, an unchurched nation, that more people are outside of church membership. Now they still might feel that they, because of their Christian heritage, they identify as Christian, but we very much are on an eight decade trend of people not being churched, but they still, something about their Christian heritage still resonates. So we can look at this through a legal lens, a legalistic lens that says, well, no, based on your Christian uh, doctrine, this is how you're supposed to act to become, to, to say that you're a Christian. Or you can see what's happening with the tide of people who say, I'm not finding the kind of emotional and spiritual support inside my organized religion experience. And I feel more fulfilled and enriched by moving away from that and trying what to be spiritually independent from it. So if that serves your spirituality to hold on to your doctrine and be, and, and be immersed into your denominational experience, good for you. But there's a lot of us who just simply, that's not the case anymore. And so there's a whole bunch of people telling their stories here on TikTok about deconstructing. And all you have to do is go, I don't use the hashtags because every time I do, I... I seem to get bananaed, but um, you can spend time on those and, and hear people listen to their stories, listen to their pain of what, the, what's, what organized religion did 
to them and why they left, why they decided it was better out here. Now that doesn't mean some people deconstruct and they return to some other type of spiritual community, whether that's actually in a denominational experience or it's something like a Unitarian or Unity, or even something that is far away from that, because there's actually Buddhist Christian centric uh, spiritual centers arrive, uh, bounding now or thriving across the United States, uh, because people are st starting to understand that some of that rigid dogma, dogma isn't, isn't necessary for their personal spiritual experience. But that doesn't mean that they're doing it to insult their religious heritage and that's why they want to hold on to part of it as their identity. So my unchurched identity is is my explaining my journey. It's not to insult those who find spirituality inside church. It's telling my it's telling my story. So um I hope that helps, but yes, somebody said something about um, not enough understood him. Uh, Scott McKinney said Bishop Spong wrote Christ why Christianity oh. must change or unalive. Thank you for using vernacular well, here. Uh, not, am... not enough understood him. That was one of the first books I read when I started to deconstruct, and I was so terrified by that book that I actually took the cover off of it and hid it because I was afraid that people would judge me for reading the book. Go ahead, Will. Well, I, uh, there's a few things you said. Concerning Spong, I'm anti-Spong. I think it was a travesty that he was not laicized and excommunicated from the Episcopal Church. Um, that is my opinion. Spong has, should have no position as a clergyman. He is a disgrace to the, uh, Anglican, to the Anglican tradition as a whole. Um, that is my opinion on Spong. Uh, and I think that Rowan Williams, the former Archbishop of Canterbury, who some of you might appreciate, wrote a scathing review of uh, his writings uh, in which he attacked it as basically this, this empty, meaningless cultural Christianity. But and I think again, that you would I'm... also agree that cultural Christianity, I think you would also oppose the sort of Dawkins-esque cultural Christianity, which is basically just Western European chauvinism, right? Dawkins basically just uses it, he says, I'm a cultural Christian as an excuse to hate uh, uh, Muslims, right? And that's kind of how I see this identitarian Christianity, which if people cease being Christian, but they still want to hold on to it, I see it as basically just an empty uh, signifier. Uh, and if you're not a Christian and you don't believe it, uh, then I do. I would ask people to leave the church, right? If they don't believe in Christianity anymore, I don't want them uh, to be members of Christian denominations because I don't want them taking communion if they don't believe. I don't want them... Uh, making decisions for a congregation. I don't want them preaching. Uh, so, so I welcome that. You know, uh, I guess I have some, uh, you know, I'm disappointed that people are, I guess, apostatizing from Christianity, but better they leave the churches than, uh, than stay in as, as unbelievers. All right. I'm um, going to, I'm going to concerning like Christian Buddhism. I don't really believe that that's a, a concept. I think that's a, 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 a corruption of both Buddhism and Christianity okay, because I'm gonna, I think that they I'm gonna hold stop you. Views. I'm going to stop you there. <laughs> um, so you're you have said some things that um, uh, well. I'm just going to be honest with you. As as direct as I and mean, blunt as you are, you are absolutely clueless to what religious patriarchy has done to people. Your singular experience is. You're, you're applying that to the entirety of so many of us who came up through evangelical, fundamentalist, conservative Christianity. And there's an arrogance to some of what you're saying related to telling people that it's best that they leave if they're not going to serve in a Christian experience that according to you. And that is that is not only hurtful, it's affirming for so many people who are leaving instead of using the mindset, especially for somebody who's, who is identifying as a Presbyterian, which is supposed to be part of this more progressive side of Christianity, which is exactly why I left the Presbyterian church in the first place, because this is exactly what I found inside this this progressive thinking was someone who was actually more judgmental and closed-minded about what Christianity should look like. And before 
um, because this is my space, I'm going to go ahead and take you take you down just because um, if, if for you, there's no there's no there's no aligning here for, for where we are in our spiritual journey. You're getting a lot of comments here. Now, I'm going to be the first to uh, tell you that the people here are deconstructing. They're not going to, they're not going to reconcile. And Scott McKinney says too, he proves Spong is correct. That is where the, 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 you got most passionate about some of the things that you were talking about when you were condemning John Shelby Spong were, were so for many of us was a lifeline, was an absolute lifeline that when I was ordained in 2017, I sent a picture and an email to a dying Spong to let him know that because of his work, I did not give up on spirituality. That I didn't let the harm that I, that I experienced inside church turn me away. So for you to come in here and condemn our experiences to the point that you're going to act like that that person is an apostate and deserves to be contempt. I don't care what some bishop wrote someplace because I'm going to be honest. You're going to find this very interesting. I have had to block people that are actually really high up in the church because they're so offended by my thinking that I have the right to be here to assure people that deconstructing is okay. They're enraged that I'm actually giving people a lifeline. So I don't give a flip what organized religion is saying about the deconstructing or John Shelby Spong or any of the other churched, churched deconstructing. So we're now talking about Barbara Brown Taylor, uh, Rob Bell, uh, John Shelby Spong, Rachel Held Evans, Nadia Bowles Weber, all of those people at one time or another, somebody in church has mocked and condemned. And we're here to tell you, if you would just, I bet you, you don't even know what Pew Research Center is. You would not even go look at the data. Go look at Gallup Poll 2019 that showed that for the first time ever in America, we are an unchurched country. They're the ones who used that, that word as well. Thank you, Happy Heather. I love you too. Hi, Spencer. It's good to see you again. Well, Will is okay, y'all, with Christianity becoming a minority. It is going to become a minority. It already is, but you, what do you know? And here's, here's the, listen to this, listen to these, listen to these statements. I'm okay with non-Christians outnumbering Christians. I'm okay. He's okay with it. We all can sleep tonight because Will is okay with all of that. Let's talk about gatekeeping humanity and this indoctrination of this religion, this religious ideology. Look, I've got friends here who are part of the progressive Christian movement and I'm going to be clipping this, but y'all got a problem because this is the kind of person that's inside your church who's not afraid to show how close-minded they really are about the way that, that your religion is showing up in the world. Because that, that's, that's really scary stuff, to be honest with you. I'm going to take a break. Well, because you don't care about why people are leaving church. I want to ask you a question. What do you know about Project 2025? Well, what do you know about Christian nationalism? What do you know about the family? What do you know about the moral majority and its roots in segregation, where it tried to make it be about abortion? What do you know about any of that? Because you're reflecting and you're reflecting an ignorance that is making your is that is mocking your faith when those of us who are deconstructing are actually the ones who are doing the majority of the work to try to correct 
some of the corruption that's inside church. It's not just sitting inside evangelical, it's sitting inside the progressive church. Because there's a distancing of a responsibility for the rise of Christian nationalism. Yes, Shaq, Shaq does hair. They, did, they don't care because they are scared to death of losing congregations. It, it, it is. It's ab it, it absolutely is. Uh, Joanna, tell me about your relationship with Jesus. Start here. Uh, Joanna, I don't know if you've made other comments, but I, I'm not sure what, what you mean by that. Uh, yeah, I'm in the middle of some conversations here. Thank you for keeping the conversations going. Yep, Tani Mary, we don't have to talk about that when we are deconstructing. Uh, Sean Allen, thank you. Uh, Sean says, so glad you mentioned Project 2025. Hope you educate followers about this. I have lots of videos about Project 2025. I also am now doing a lot of discussion about um, the Latin uh, Mass. Hi, Annie. Thank you. Um, because there's a lot of there's a lot of ties between what's happening in the in that traditional Latin Mass and uh, Christian nationalism, but also Project 2025, and it's all really convoluted. But I do think that that is the premise behind Mike Pence coming out and speaking out against Trump, but very much again, very much for, very much for Project 2025. That's why I said, and I got heavily criticized for saying that Liz Cheney cannot be trusted. Uh, people were like, no, she's changed. She's a warrior now. Liz Cheney voted with Trump 93% of the time. L Liz Cheney is part of the problem, but I think what she sees is that Trump is talking to other people besides Christian nationalists. And they he will further their agenda over the Christian nationalist agenda. Can you, can you hear me? Serene, Serene says she, that we've lost sound. Can everybody hear me okay? Thank you for sharing the live, Tawny Marie. That's very important. Uh, Auntie, I'm going back. Auntie Queen, they just want to come into our space and inflict more trauma. Sending love. Yeah, and you know what, uh, Auntie Queen, thank you for that reminder because we're going to have people come in and, and disagree with us. And I want you all to know that we do our best. We have amazing mods here. We have amazing mods, and it's not that we don't want people who, who, who have questions or people who are, who are not deconstructing, because there's people who aren't deconstructing who get us. So if you didn't see that video I did, I did a video yesterday of someone who is a church Christian who, who, who defended a video where, who said I was persecuting Christians with the video. No, I'm really telling our story. When people come in here and proselytize, no one's looking at those comments when someone drops a, a, a verse by Paul and says, um, and leaves it there like they just did something. It's like, oh my Lord, let me just turn this live off now and everybody get to church. It doesn't work that way. It affirms the reason that we left. And that's basically what I was saying. And this person said, she's not persecuting us. She's right. We got to stop doing this. So in other words, it's a church Christian, Christian, active Christian, who's not deconstructing, who gets us who understands we are not in conflict. you got to see that this winning back for many of us isn't going to happen. Now, I know better than to say never say never. Do you know how many invitations I get to church a church, <laughs> to pastor a church? And I'm like, do you know me? Do you really know me? Do you really want me pastoring your church? <laughs> think you do. Like, Yo, we really do. We really want you to pastor our church. No, no, I don't think so. I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, let's see what we said. Trying to break free. What did I address? So are you a Christian? If so, why? I was here earlier and I, I went through that. So you can catch it on another. And I've also got a video uh, from last week where I talk about it. 
Uh, Ron Boyd says, yes, a verse by Paul opens up a whole new topic. Well, first of all, is it really a verse by Paul? And secondly, have we weaponized it to where Paul's reflecting his historical context of what he believed at the time, what the value of women was at the time, what was happening in his context. But yeah, let's bring it up to 2,000 years later and make it apply to us. Because if you're going to get that radical, then let's also make sure that everybody, every woman in church is covering their head. Uh, I would come to your church. Thank you, Jezebel. Thank you. Well, you kind of are. You kind of are coming to my church. Does that work? <laughs> Does that work? What books would you recommend to start deconstructing? Rosie, uh, I do have some book recommendations. Um, I'm going to be doing some reviews. I just can't build it into my platform right now. I'm really busy. Fundamentalism is radical. It absolutely is. Um, there are some writers. If you've never read anything from John uh, Shelby Spong, Bishop John Shelby Spong, y'all know, now know how I feel about Bishop Spong. Um, don't go there. But there are some really good books. Those, those, were, those books were some of the first that I read. Then I also read Rescuing, uh, oh, Stacy, I always forget it, from Adya Shanti. I cannot remember the title of this book. Um, but Spong also has one that's called Jesus for the Non-Religion. My book will be out in five months, Deconstructing, Leaving Church, Finding Faith. Um, it is in pre-order now. Where's my book? Oh, it's back here. You can't, let me just grab it. Oh, you want to see it? Did you say you wanted to see it? I think you did. Deconstructing, Leaving Church, Finding Faith. It's available for pre-order. You can find that in my profile. We appreciate that. There'll be some nice incentives coming with that tune. Yes, Rachel Held Evans, Searching for Sunday. Her first book was it the uh, Year of Women, uh, Biblical Womanhood. Oh my God. First of all, it's hilarious. And I was like, oh yes, I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. This, this is cra this is, this is, this is insane. So that was what, you know, going back to our conversation earlier with Will, those are churched people who are, who are deconstructing. Now there, I think there's many of us who are now unchurched and our voices are being heard. Uh, Mary says, as a lo I'm a long lapsed Roman Catholic, I miss the community, but can't go back to the orthodoxy. Joe, thank you so much for pre-ordering. Uh, yeah, missing the community. Now, Joe, I want to give you some hope. And I, I, I know I have many people talking about this, influencers, creators, saying, what does community look like? Because people do want that. There's some things that church does really well when it comes to uh, that kind of support. Like, nobody's going to put together a, a food like for a funeral like a church can. Am I right? And those, there's just a, 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 a need and a, some, some form of mutual aid. So I think what you're going to start seeing arising are more secular type uh, gatherings and uh, community uh, efforts with a spiritual component. So what that would look like is a, a center that identifies the needs of that community and just like random. Then Rev Carla's over here as a spiritual but not religious person who's helping people with their spiritual path. It's not denomination focused. Don't you dare be fooled by some marketing gimmick by the non-denominational church that they can run that for you. They're not. They're going to evangelize the minute they open their mouth. So there's, I've got opinions about what that's going to look like, but I think, and this is no offense to any church out there who is doing more outreach, but the, the days of a church only being open on Sundays is, is over, is over. People are awakening to the broader need of humanity and our place in it. We, nobody wants any more big impressive cathedrals they just want trailers on a lot that will that will serve those experiencing homelessness or some kind of crisis helping the single parents the caregivers the the people in long term with physical ailments who need support you're going to start to see 
those kinds of centers. Mutual aids really came and thrived during COVID and some centers or some of those mutual aids are still very much an active part of the community. And I think you'll start to see, you'll start to see uh, for, uh, more of that. Ron Boyd, you are on it. Non-denominational is a new denomination. Yes, 100%, 100% red flag, 100% red flag. Non-denominational is not some modern vibe that tells you that everything in there, they are just so liberal and they are just so progressive thinking. Absolutely not. That toxic theology is hiding behind that rock band and pastor in jeans. I don't care how much smoke machine they have going from the, from the worship, uh, the, the stage, because it's no longer a pulpit. The stage, it's there. Find out how many uh, marriages that the pastor has officiated of the LGBTQIA plus community. Who is in leadership? Who's ordained from the LGBTQIA plus community? That always gets the people who say, no, my pastor would never condemn anybody from the LGBTQIA plus community. No, they won't do that oh, because our church is so welcoming. Let me tell you, a welcoming church is one of the most dangerous, unhealthy types of churches there are. That is a, that is a masterful form of gaslighting. And if you don't understand the difference between a welcoming and affirming church, uh, at my website, RevCarla.com, you can download welcoming versus affirming church. So you can read more about it. Hey, Bob Chicago, how are you? Yeah, you're metropolitan, if I remember right, right? I think. Um, I saw a comment that I wanted to... I want to get your book for sure. I'd love to read more about this. Thank you, Shakdo. Thank you. Um, Y'all, yeah, thank you so much. There's been some wonderful conversations here. I appreciate it. Uh, I've got to, have I heard of Ken Arrington? Greg, hi, Greg. I'm glad you're here as well. I have not. I have not heard of Greg. Rob. Ron, I'm sorry. Uh, the music service doesn't get into the political issues. That's the face they present. Absolutely. Absolutely. Some of what, I don't know if you were here on, was this Monday? I don't remember. I get my lives confused. But anyway, there was a person came in and he was talking about his non-denominational church and how much outreach they're doing. But he could not tell me whether or not their church had ever ordained any member of the LGBTQI plus community, or if they've ever had a wedding inside their church. That type of uh, policy and doctrine is hidden from the congregation. Front facing, they may even put a rainbow flag out front because they are happy to bring you in and let you give your money and sing in the pews, but they're gonna gatekeep then how much you can actually come in and be an active part of the spiritual community. And I know he, he, he went off running. He didn't want to talk to me anymore because it's not enough to just say, hey, we go down to help uh, the homeless w one time a week. Our church is awesome. Yeah, but where is your responsibility for understanding that unless you're educating and empowering your congregation, then there's a very good chance that most of those people are entrenched in evangelical beliefs and more than likely going to vote for Trump. And they don't see how they're a part of the problem because they're so distanced from Christian nationalism and they don't understand it because the whole model of their church lulls people into a complacency for anything that's outside the church doors. They start to believe that only the work that they do connected to their church matters to the kingdom of heaven and it has nothing to do with outside those church doors. That's intentional. That is absolutely intentional. Uh, con to girls, I will have an audiobook. As a matter of fact, we've set the dates for my recording it and it will be in my voice. So I hope that's good. <laughs> I hope you can handle that. I'm already sweating like crazy. I got going talking to Will. Um, 
<laughs> Joe, that's good. A flag flapping outside the church means come on over. We will leave you twisting in the wind. And, you know, people, people hear this stuff and think, oh, y'all are just so bitter. Y'all are just so angry. Why are you in here mocking the church? No, we're in here telling our stories. I, you know, and I think there's, for many of us, we're deconstructing, which is also part of our reconstructing. But in order to get to the place where you start to reclaim your spirituality, you got to heal those broken parts. And you got to do the work. And doing the work is often in places like this where you can be seen and affirmed for feeling angry and bitter. And just like the Lori that we were talking to early, it was clear that she is experiencing some form of, she has experienced spiritual abuse. And it has been with her since her childhood. And until she can start to unpack that, it, it, it's going to impact how she continues to grow in her spirituality and how she can reconcile the fact. And it's, that is a lot of work because my grandmother was a staunch Southern Baptist. My great grandma, grandmother was a Bible thumping Southern Baptist. When I remember some of the stories that were told around the table and I love my family. So you have to reconcile the fact that these are your, this is your heritage. But there was a lot of stuff tied to white tea supremacy back there. And that's part of who I am. So how do I break away and, and decolonize from that, those indoctrinations and yet still reconcile the fact that I love them? And that's work. That is work. And that's what we're here doing. So you tell your stories. We don't listen to people telling us that we're bitter and angry. This is how you heal. This is our support group time. We do it together. Oh, I didn't realize I had a request. Let's see who it is. All right, come on up, Ellie of Six. Are you still here? I don't know how soon, how long ago you requested. Are you there? Yes. How are you? Are you a de here. are you a deconstructing Christian? I am a deconstructing Christian. I am older, sixty nine. And I've been deconstructing for quite a long time, but I came from that same Southern Baptist background of at least two grandparents, both sides of the family, generations of uh, lots of religions. So yeah. I, I actually did not realize I was requesting to be on the live. <laughs> That's okay. That is okay. You know what? Thank you for being here. Uh, I have a lot of people, especially those who come into my live. I do uh, workshops live. And a lot of times they're in our generation because for many of us, we are... Um, we are deconstructing at, a, at an older age, and sometimes that requires a quiet, gentle space to be able to do that. So I appreciate you coming up, and feel free to be here anytime. We try to come in Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at uh, noon Eastern, and you can find out okay. you can find more information about what some of the things that we offer at RevCarla.com. Great. I need to go to your website. I do see your content quite a lot and oh, enjoy it. Thank good. You. Good. Well, thank you for being here. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect you because we're going to get okay. ready to uh, close this out for for today. Uh, oh, my goodness. Thank you all so very much. I know I got worked up and some of you did too. Uh, Tani, I see what you said when my husband passed. I called our pastor and he wouldn't even answer the phone. I'm so sorry. And Jupiter Spawn says, love my family, but they are still stuck in indoctrination and waiting on a savior. Yeah. Rev Ashley, I love your uh, work, Rev Carla, supporting your shining light and supporting folks. Thank you, Rev Ashley. I appreciate that. I appreciate you uh, being here. Thank you, Liza Marie. Um, I'm going to be teaching tomorrow on, what am I teaching on? The paradox of gratitude, because for so many of us, we are... Our indoctrination is really messed up when it comes to gratitude, forgiveness, sin, uh, grief, you know, holding on to some of our emotions or denying our emotions. 
So a couple times a month, I teach a series called Sacred Conversations. These are in a, uh, a Zoom setting off of the noise of social media. You're, and then once you've registered, that the recording is also available, but you can be in there and you can ask me questions. Also follow my backup accounts, Rev Carla Shop and Rev Carla T-O-O. Uh, I there are a couple of spam accounts out there do not uh, some of you I, one of them has 1200 followers y'all not even my backup account has that many followers I only have two it's on my profile you can see it's Rev Carla Rev Carla shop and Rev Carla TOO so make sure you're following those because I will be doing some more things in in my shop at some point um, I think I've gotten through everything is there anything else mods that I need to to need to say. We good, Lynette? All right, you beautiful souls. Thank you all so very much. It's been a wonderful conversation. Uh, we are we are slowly making our way to Pride Month, and don't forget it. Uh, forget what Harrison Butker says. That that dude's got got a lot of problems and we have to make sure that the ideology that he's tied to does not become a part of our country leadership because Christian fascism will lead to Christian nationalism and we need to make sure that we stay awake, use our voice and vote but remember that you are loved and you are deeply loved just the way you are. So whether you are out loud and proud, I affirm you and I celebrate you, or if you are in the closet and questioning or you have to do so out of necessity, just know that you are not a mistake, you are not a sin, and you are not flawed. There's nothing broken about you. You are perfect just the way you are. All right, everyone. See you Friday about noon Eastern time. Take care.